What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Fantasy Factor. Once again, I'm Mike, he's Matt, and let's waste no time. Tell me whose performance surprised you the most last week? I gotta go with Calvin Ridley without a doubt. Week one, he went off, showcasing his talent and showing Matt Ryan's offensive wideout weaponry. Week two was slow for Julio Jones, who's arguably the best wide receiver in the league. Calvin Ridley had seven receptions, 109 yards, and two touchdowns for almost 30 PPR um, points in these leagues. So I'm sure people are happy with the middle to late round pick they had in him. For me, it was Justin Herbert. He was told he would make, be making his NFL start against the Kansas City Chiefs just seconds before kickoff. And for the rookie QB, the stage wasn't too big. He threw for one touchdown, over 300 yards, and used his leg to get 18 yards and another score. And I expect a lot of people will be picking him up off the fantasy, off the waiver wire very soon. No doubt. And then now let's move on to the top performers of the week. First, we have Aaron Jones, 45.6 points. He had over 200 all-purpose yards in the Packers' 42-21 beatdown in Detroit. Then we move on to Dak Prescott, leading the Cowboys to a one-point win against the Falcons after trailing by 20. Um, third, Alvin Kamara with 38.4 and a shocking loss Monday night football to the Raiders on my team, so that was good. Uh, Cam Newton with 34.5 and a losing effort against the Seahawks, but still impressive. And then five, we had Josh Allen. Then moving on to six, we had Russell Wilson. He threw for five touchdowns. And then finally, number seven, Kyler Murray. He continues to prove why he's worthy of the number one overall pick after beating up on the Washington football team. And then this week, we're going to introduce a new segment called Rise or Fall. We're going to look at a few of the 2-0 and teams' upcoming Week 3 matchups and see if we think that team is going to continue to rise above or fall back to the pack. And then the first 2-0 and team is the Oakland Raiders on the road against the New England Patriots. Now, Matt, I'm going to ask you to put your fandom aside and be objective here. Do you see a red-hot Raiders squad that just beat the Saints rising above the Patriots? All right, fandom aside, I think that the Patriots will still win, okay? Um, uh, Raiders are a very good team, but I think they'll fall to two and one. Um, they beat the Saints, yes, very mm -hmm. good team, but they beat the Saints without Michael Thomas, sure. and their offense was still going. Um, I think that if they, if Saints had had Michael Thomas, it might have been a little different. Right. Patriots game against the Seahawks. I think that if you're doubting their talent right now, right. after almost beating the Seahawks on the one yard line, I think that um, you're kind of a kind of crazy if you don't right. think the Patriots <laughs> exactly. are are good right now. Um, Julian Edelman had a career game. Cam Newton went off, like I said earlier. Um, I think that it'll be a good game, but I think the Patriots will be able to, uh, to come up against the Raiders. All right, I think at the end of the day, it'll come down to coaching. I think Belichick and the Patriots will win against the Raiders 28-24. All right, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I think the Raiders will in fact fall to two and one. While they did beat up on the Saints, I think that was due more to the shortcomings of the Drew Brees without Michael Thomas. And I've also really been impressed with how well Cam Newton has been playing. Uh, he's running, he's throwing well, and he's fit into the system that was built kind of for Tom Brady very well. He's not the same quarterback as Tom Brady. So now I see the pass going, going past the Raiders to 24-14. Um, next we have the Steelers against the Houston Texans. Um, I have the Steelers falling. I think Houston's a good team, but they happen to play against the two best teams in the AFC from last season. Uh, the Steelers have played against the New York Giants and an injury-riddled Denver Broncos. Drew Locke played like five snaps, I think, and Cortland Sutton right. also tore his ACL, barely played last week. So I think um, for the Texans to be competing against two probably Super Bowl contenders right. this year, I think Bill O'Brien and Deshaun Watson will be able to lead their team to victory. 35-21, mm -hmm. uh, to 21, mm -hmm. Texans is my final score. All right, and now what you say is true about the Steelers' first two opponents. I mean, I still see them coming away, away with the win. I think T.J. Watt's pass rush combined with Mika and Fitzpatrick in the secondary, it's going to be too much for Deshaun Watson to handle. And even though he's, he is not projected to have a big week against a fairly strong Texan secondary, I think Juju smith Suster is due for a breakout game against the Texans. I do expect it to be a close game, though. I have the Steelers winning by a final score of 17-14. Next is the 2-0 Rams on the road against another 2-0 team, the Buffalo Bills. Um, I think this is going to be a fun game to watch. Um, as much as I can't stand the Bills, mm. uh, their offense looks stellar right now, but it's been against the Jets right. and the Dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have the Rams rising against the Bills. I think Stephon Diggs is going to get shut down by Jalen Ramsey. Mm. 
Um, the Rams have looked good in both games against the Eagles and the Cowboys. They have a much stronger defense than the Jets or the Dolphins, like I just said. Um, Aaron Donald, I mean, I don't think right, the Bills nah. will have the O-line necessary to keep Aaron Donald off Josh Allen. Not many do. Um, Jalen Ramsey's going to shut down Stephon Diggs, um, and I think that's pretty much the Bills' offense. Right, and then, so for me, I say the Bills' offense has been on a different level through the first two games, but remember who they've played against, as you said, Dolphins and the Jets, two very, you know, not spectacular teams, to say the least. And then I think Jalen Ramsey is going to prove why he signed that five-year, $1 million, Oof. or $100 million contract extension. And the Rams are going to win 31-13. And so next, we move on to the 2-0 Titans visiting the winless Minnesota Vikings. So I'm going to pick the Titans to rise, and here's why. Ryan Tannehill had thrown for six touchdowns and no interceptions in the first two games. Under head coach Mike Vrabel, I would say he's kind of completely turned his career around. And I also see Derrick Henry, who hasn't scored at all this year so far, rediscovering his playoff form and running all over the Vikings. And also on the Vikings side, Kirk Cousins has been probably one of the worst quarterbacks in the league this year. <laughs> under 60% completion. And then for these reasons, I have the Titans winning 20 to seven. And yes, I do expect Gostowski to make his kicks this week. <laughs> Got a Patriots fan, I hope so. Um, I picked the Titans to fall. Um, Minnesota is to win a game at some point. I right. think healthy Adam Thielen, healthy Dalvin Cook, there's no better time to do it. Right. Um, a Tennessee team that hasn't really seen a whole lot of competition. Um, AJ Brown is set to return in week three, still looking doubtful. Um, Derrick Henry is reliable, but he wasn't himself last week, so right. I'm not sure if we can um, judge it off of 84 yards on 25 right. attempts. Um, I think they're going to win 30 to 21. All right, and then now we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't discuss a horrific week of injuries that was week two in the NFL. Firstly, there were so many injuries that would be impossible to list every player that went down last week. We obviously wish the, wish the best to all of those who were injured and wish them all speedy recoveries. But we're going to cover those whose injuries mean the most to the fantasy side. So first off, Saquon Barkley. He suffered a torn ACL and will be out for the remainder of the season. Jimmy Garoppolo suffered a high ankle sprain. Um, shouldn't be out for more than one to two weeks. Um, doesn't seem to be too severe, thank God. And then fellow 49ers teammate Raheem Mostert. He went down last week. It was an MCL sprain, but he shouldn't be out more than a few weeks. Uh, Cortland Sutton, just like Saquon, um, Torn ACL, out for the season. That's a huge hit to the Broncos. As well as my fantasy team. And so next we have Christian McCaffrey. Well, McCaffrey is listed to be out for four to six weeks. This turns out not to be horrible news for all those out there who had the first pick in their drafts. And then quickly before we go, one player to watch this week. Um, Vikings. Um, Dalvin Cook especially. I expect him to get a lot of carries um, in Minnesota's attempt for their first win. Right. And then for me, I say watch out for Henry Ruggs against the Patriots. Now, while I, while I have the Raiders winning, I see Ruggs having a breakout game this week. All right, that's all we have for today's episode of Fantasy Factor. Tune in next week um, for week three fantasy reactions and week four predictions, hopefully with a much smaller injury right. report. I'm Matt. And I'm Mike. And thanks for watching Fantasy Factor.